Hello, welcome to the No Rest for the Ruby podcast. My name is Claire Hill, self belief coach, got who I was then, and host of this podcast. And I'm also the founder of the Vivid Business Club. Before I introduce the, the amazing person I've got on today, go and check that you have subscribed and followed the podcast. And I know that I'm saying this at the beginning of every single episode. And for those of you who are like, bore off, I've already done it. I did it the first time you said, fantastic. But maybe you're new around here and you've no idea who I am. Stick with me because it's all, well, I mean, with over 200 episodes deep, it's a pretty good podcast. Um, but subscribe and follow, and then you can make sure that you always keep up to date with the new episodes and they come out Monday and Thursday at 70 a.m. UK time. And it's on YouTube as well. And I'm, I'm going to now introduce my guests. I have to do that first because this is what people, just asking for what you want is the way forward. But I have the amazing Emily Armitage here today, who is a human design translator and business coach. And I'm so excited to chat to you today, Emily. Thank you so much for coming on. And I just want to say, before we get going, how impressed I was with how you pitched to me. So oh, anyone that's listening that wants to be on, like Emily is like the textbook. It was amazing how you pitched. <laughs> oh, that's really good feedback. Wanna... Thank you very much. And thank you for having me on. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. And I know that you you are a human design enthusiast, so I am so excited to totally geek out about it with you. Um, I think we're probably going to go down a right rabbit hole, and I'm I'm well up for it. I'm so here for it. I'm so excited. I geek out to this. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I'm still a novice, and I just it's just amazing. And when I, when I when you said like, can I come on? And I was looking at what you do. I was like, this is perfect. And if you're a Vivi Business Club member and you're listening. Emily's going to come in and do a guest expert session as well. So I am. I am. It's so cool. It's so cool. So tell me, um, I guess you're from up north somewhere. Whereabouts are you I from? Am. So I'm in Sheffield um, oh, in, in South Yorkshire, just near the Peak District. Um, so yes, I am a northern lass. You will be able to tell from my accent. Love it. Love it. Where Gladiators is filmed in Sheffield yes, Arena. Yes, Sheffield Arena. Yeah, it must be all that. My son is obsessed with Gladiators. Oh, yeah. Like seriously obsessed with it like I've, I've never seen this kind of obsession before so that's why I'm just like chef he knows where Sheffield is if you if he if anyone was saying to it and also I've been there a few times it's the trams you've got all your trams and stuff haven't you we have trams they don't always go where you want them to go but <laughs> we have trams <laughs> brilliant one of my best friends went to uni in Sheffield so I had a few oh, really? wonderful nights out there that's oh, like yeah, 20 yeah. years ago now so I don't God, oh, that's Miss Murray for really old. Um, so <laughs> what's the business love story? Where did it all begin? Yeah, so um, my current business, I am, like you say, human design translator, coach, strategist for um, women with businesses and big dreams. And I help them apply human design to their businesses to really build and create a business around who they really are, um, which helps you drop the shoulds. It helps you remove comparison and it really helps you go after your vision in a way that is aligned with how you naturally work um, and protect your energy and all, all sorts of good things like that. Um, I've I've had a very meandering kind of career and oh, take, um, business us. kind of Love life. It. So I've always been kind of trying to do something. I've always kind of had a side hustle. Like I think when I was about four or five, I wrote my mum and dad a price list for looking after my sister and they've still got it pinned up in the kitchen. And it was like 10p, take Sarah to the toilet, um, 5p, do hoovering, things like that. Um, so I've always kind of had that sort of inclination and I've done all sorts over the years and sort of had ideas that haven't quite come to fruition so I was gonna um do like eyebrow threading and I was gonna make macaroons and sell them online and I was gonna do like do you remember back in like the early noughties 2010s there was like a big like British great British sewing bee and yeah all that kind of thing and so I had these ideas for like these Victorian craft knickers so it was like knickers in a twist and it was like a sweet wrapper but you could craft your own pants oh my god <laughs> all sorts of things just totally random things like this alongside that I've had um a career in marketing communications and um change management so that's kind of 
been a thread that's run through everything. I've worked in so many different industries. I've worked in um, a state agency. I've worked in cosmetics. I've worked in um, like tech. I've worked in higher education. I've worked in a lot of different areas. Um, but that sort of thread of how people work, why they do what they do or don't do what they do, like the sort of psychology behind that has been a, a thread through it. Um, and then I had coaching myself in like 2012 and as I was sat there and I was like a guinea pig for a coach who was practicing and, and and qualifying. And I was like, this little voice in my head was like, oh my God, you you should do this. Like this is this is what you need to do. And I shut it down and shut it down. It took me eight years to start to do my qualification. Um, eight years of like squishing it, worrying what people would think, um, just like not preparing to go for it, listening to my inner critic, all that sort of stuff. And in the end, I was just like, do you know what Emily if nothing changes nothing changes and what have you got to lose by doing the qualification um so I did that and I set up my coaching practice in 2020 before that as I was qualifying I set up a business selling like uh spreadsheet templates for like holidays and Christmas like organization stuff and my heart really wasn't in it but I was kind of like well if I make a website for that and if I do social media for that then it'll be easier to transition into co like co the coaching mm. messaging and it was all sort of really fear-based yeah. so I've got um I've got a defined spleen and I've a huge going into human design I've got a huge amount of defined gates there and uh with your spleen it's like a really ancient part of of who we are as humans and it's where our instinct lives our intuition lives but it's also where fear lives as well and when you've got a defined spleen with defined gates as well it can be really easy to like slip into fear being in charge um so knowing that helped me really analyze what I do and poke it a little bit and be like is this true or is this your fear talking like what's going on here um so that that was really helpful in like getting getting over stuff so Fast forward a little bit. I was working full time in change management in higher education and I'd got my coaching business like on the side and I got pregnant like it, I, I wanted to, it was planned, but also I was like, oh, this is a bit of a catalyst now. Like I, something's going to have to give, like I've got a coaching practice, I've got a full time job, I'm going to have a baby in the mix and I don't want to like be running around like a headless chicken and only seeing my kid like at the drag ends of the day when everybody's knackered and hungry. Yeah. Like what, how, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? Something's got to give. And it was at that point that I really dove into my human design to pivot my business. Um, Cause at the time I was doing money coaching um, and there was a lot of imposter syndrome there. A lot of, I wasn't very clear on who I was for, what I was standing for. A lot of people were like, are you a financial advisor? And I'm like, no, 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 I'm, I'm not. <laughs> Um, so it was a real turning point in going, right, <clears throat> I've got to make this work. I don't want to be in that corporate job anymore. I need to really go all in on my business so I can create this life that I want for us as a family. Um, so yeah, that was like the real turning point to then get me to where I am now. Oh, I love you. <laughs> You're amazing. I love it when I meet people like this. I just yeah. go, I don't feel right. I'm going to try something else on. It doesn't feel right. I'm going to try something else. I just love it. Do you know, in retrospect, it kind of feels like that. But at the time, there's a lot of feeling stuck. There's a lot of feeling frustrated. Yeah. There's a lot of, do I, don't I, like, don't I. It's the soul searching for the right answer and all that sort of stuff. But actually leaning into that, the human design and, and there's some stuff I'm going to talk to you about today, like how you can really make decisions in a way that's a lot clearer and easier and more aligned with what you want than, than allowing that conditioning to get in the way and the fear and the shoulds. Um, so yeah, leaning into that really helped. And then when it, when you're like chatting through in retrospect, you're like, oh yeah, it feels like all this just sort of flippantly happened, but it, it really didn't. It was, it was been a bit of a slog. <laughs> I still, I, I think that it's all transferable because everything oh God, happens yeah. exactly as it should. And it, all of those steps led you exactly here. here. So yeah. how did you come across human design? Where did that oh. passion <laughs> come from? Completely by accident. Um, so it was through a coaching client, actually. And she kept talking about human design. Every session I had with her, she mentioned human design. I'm like, what the hell is she talking about? Like, I've never heard of this thing before. I'm going to have to look into it. Now I know because of 
my human design. I'm a five one like you. So that one, that researcher, it's like, we yeah. have to get to the bottom. We have to get the answers. If something sparks our interest, it's like, right, we go deep. Let's yeah. find out. And that was the case for me and human design. I was like, I'm interested and then I, I downloaded a chart and it was just like, what the hell is this? It's all like shapes and numbers and lines and like, and for some, you either look at it and go, oh no, thank you. Or you look at it and go, what the hell is this? I need to know more about it. Hmm. So that was it. Yeah, that was it. That was it in a nutshell. <laughs> you're, you're facing a full stop, but I didn't hear the full <laughs> stop. So I was like, a bit delayed in my reaction then. Um, so... <laughs> So you got the thing, did you do like, is it just literally your own journey of studying it? Yeah, 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 definitely. So I'm, for me, this has been quite a departure. So I'm somebody that's like, right, I'm interested in a thing. Let's do a certificate. Let's do a qualification. Um, And the thing with human design, you can definitely take certificates and get qualifications in it. But I have found it so interesting and so applicable that to like deep dive and learn it myself and apply it myself I'm kind of coming at this from like an experiential way Mm -hmm. rather than so and so um signed me off a-okay you can talk about human design I'm like because of because of the sort of modality it is and there's so many different ways of teaching it and so many different ways of receiving it I'm kind of like I don't there's, there's teachers of human design that I really rate um but I'm also like am I going to be a disciple of that person and follow in their footsteps? Or am I going to find out about this thing for myself, look at how I can apply it myself and then teach others and show others that way? Um, Because actually that might be more applicable than just going Mm. for rote. Like I learned what the academic version is. Here here you go. Rather than I've learned what this means in real life. And this is how you can apply it. And this is how it helped me. And this is how it can help you instead. So you're a five, a generator five, one profile. Mm -hmm. What's your authority? Sacral. Sacral. Okay. Yeah. So I get that real gut response. Like for me, it's such a physical thing. Like um, I'll either do like a really like, like intake of breath, like, oh, excited. Or I'll get like, I call it collie wobbles. Like, you know, your insides be a little wibbly. Yeah. might not go that as a projector um or I'll get like internal champagne like it feels like bubbles um it's such a real real physical thing and you're a splenic yeah, but so, yeah. But, and, but that is a gut instinct one as well isn't it yes oh yeah, it yeah. so well sort of so you're, you're in your say um well I'm the sacral you're you're the splenic um so you'll get like that intuitive hit and it's different for everybody. I've had people describe it to me as like a download or an inexplainable little voice that's just telling them what mm. direction to go in or like a, just a knowing or a feeling. Like it's it really um, turns up in so many different ways for everybody. So it's really about tapping into what it looks like for you mm. and then building on that so you can then trust it. Yeah, mine is just I know. Mm. I do yeah, get yeah. like those. So my... Um... Sun gate, I think it's that the pat the, the number one bit, the first mm-hmm. gate thing, um, is number eleven. So I'm mm-hmm. like idea superpower, but I didn't realise that was the case. Even though when I know that my ideas, it's like I will just be like, right, tell me something, and it's like I give myself permission. This sounds well woo woo, but this is what actually happens. Go for it. I give myself permission to say, right, I'll I'll have those ideas now. Mm-hmm. And so somebody if it's my client or somebody in the membership or somebody I just, you know, one of my friends, I it's like I open up my brain and the ideas come in like a waterfall and they oh, will amazing. stream out of me. Like literally, mm-hmm. I go, you could do this, you could do this, you could do this, you could do this, this. And then I'm like, okay. And what I didn't realize is not everybody is ready for ideas. No. And also that not all <laughs> the ideas I have are mine. Because for a while yeah. I thought they were all mine, but they're not. Mm-hmm. So I would like get all of these ideas and people would be like, whoa, you've just literally blown my mind. And so I now have to go like, I'm, I, I can do, it's not like I'd say, well, I'm going to have an ideas download, but it is like that. Mm. I said, do, you, you, do you want me to do that? And sometimes people go, no, I'm not. I'm like, okay. But in the membership, they come onto the group sessions and they'll say, Claire, we, I just want some ideas. And they just come just for my head. <laughs> That's amazing. 
But I didn't realise that was one of the superpowers until I looked more closely at my human mm. design chart and then was like, 11, oh, that's ideas. Oh, mm. my God, that is mine. And then leaning into it a bit more and going, yeah. oh, okay, well, that is my yeah, superpower. Yeah. And I, But I definitely just, with that, you know, splenic thing, I just know. Mm. I just know if something is good or something is bad. And I've mm-hmm. always done that. Like, I'll meet people and instantly know it's like an instinct thing who they are yeah instinct yeah. instantly to the point where and again this is going to be woo woo but it, it was much stronger when I was younger but it might be just because I don't lean into it so much but I would see people and see a color ranging from mm. white to black so it'd be white to yellow to deeper yellow brown and into black and if they were somebody that wasn't that great they would be like a muddier color and if mm-hmm. they were really amazing they'd be like a white and there's mm. literally my son and my husband are white. And then I've got my sister's like a pale yellow. One of my sisters. My other sister's is pale yellow. She'll listen to this and be like, why am I not a pale yellow? <laughs> um, but yeah, and then I was, so when I went traveling, I had this experience where the, one, my friend that I was with was like, just, you know, as you do, you're traveling, you start snogging someone in a, you know, full moon party. And I just saw him and he was like the darkest, muddiest, blackest brown in Mm. as I looked at him it wasn't even it was just weird it was just like a color mm. I associated with him and I was like you've got to stay away from him and he ended up being really nasty mm. so I was like that for me instincts yeah, yeah. yeah and it's fascinating that it shows up for so many people in so many different ways yeah like, like for you it's a very visual thing mm. um but it's still that intuition it's still that instinct and I think what you were saying as well just then about being able to um have these ideas and and give them to people like you're a projector as well so like you have that overseeing kind of vision and mm-hmm. you're a real like natural guide and you can see the potential in people before they can even see it in themselves yeah. right mm-hmm. and and so combining that with those the, those amazing ideas which is obviously a gift that you've got from your that gate 11 it's like such a superpower combined like to to help other people and and to help them move forward by you living out your design yeah good I'm a coach really now. yeah get a lot of projectors <laughs> as coaches yeah so all of this amazing stuff like I am I could just talk like you know we want to give some value in this episode because well I think with human design you can talk about it for a whole day oh god or yeah more. you could just go on and on and on and get into the depths of everything but your passion is supporting people to apply it to their business so that they're not burning themselves out and they're basically yeah. being the best version of themselves within those business. What are the like really super simple things? If they're novices and they're like, we ha- there are other human design podcast episodes in this mm-hmm. podcast episode and human design, you can just literally go and get your oh, what's chart. It, chart. I think that's it. Get your chart. But from that, what what is the best bits to pick out to apply to your business? Yeah, sure. So if you are human design curious or you're a beginner, the best parts to pick out are your authority and your strategy. So your authority is like we've been talking about now. So mine's the sacral, yours is the is the spleen. And those are that's a real key part to lean into to help you make decisions better. And it was such a transformation, really, when I started listening to mine you save so much time (laughs) because you're not like getting bogged down in the what ifs or second guessing yourself or making a decision and then going oh is that the right thing and then going back over it again you're not comparing yourself to other people because you're like well what what am I doing what direction am I going in what does my sacral say oh that one right okay let's go that direction so you you remove all of that like background noise and distraction because you're you're able to focus in on what you want and how you want to do things and how you feel good about doing things because ultimately that's what that's what it's for like human design is such a brilliant self discovery self reflection tool to help you really zero in on on how you want to do things and I think a lot of us as women with businesses we don't want to do things in the same generic pale male stale way that we've seen things done before like we want to do it differently we want to do it for different reasons as well and I think combining that with your human design gives you a real 
it's a real enabler to do mm -hmm. things your way without those distractions, without those shoulds. Um, and yeah, leaning into your authority, especially around decision making, is just so, so fascinating. And yeah, saves so much time, which we all want to do, right? Because we've only got yeah. so many hours in the day. Yeah. Um, and then your strategy as well. So your strategy is how you make things happen. Um, so yourself as a projector, that's about waiting for invitation. And you just touched on it just a little bit ago about it's not always welcome. Hell yeah, yeah it's not always welcome. <laughs> like, and and especially the five one, because the five is is um in like the projection field as well. So you can find a lot of people put their perceptions on you, put their projections of who you are on you. Um, and you have to be really clear about who you are and stand in your own sort of power and put boundaries in place ar around that. Um, I've discovered that the hard way. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it's, it's so you've got like triple projector kind of nurse because you've, you've really got to wait for that invitation. And that can feel quite passive, right? At first, you mm. can be like, what is this? I'm a generator. So my um, strategy is to respond. Again, that feels super passive. I'm like, what do you mean? I've got to sit in my house and wait for stuff to respond to. It's not that at all. It's about, so for you, a projector, it's about owning your value turning up, showing showing what you're good at and what you can do for people and then letting them make their own choices using their strategy as to whether they want to invite you into their world. Mm. For me as a generator, it's about doing what lights me up in the moment, in the now. That could be my work. That could be going for a walk. It could be watching a film. It's like it's doing what feels good in the moment and stuff will come into your world anyway for you to respond to and then you tune into that authority to make the decision, is this a thing for me? Yes or no? So like, I know your podcast, I've listened to it. I ask myself, do I want to be on it? I that, That's a response to you putting your value out into the world as a projector. So I, I then send you a pitch in response and that's your invitation from me to come in, to come into your world kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's kind of how it like works works out in in real life obviously you've got manifestors reflectors and manifesting generators as well um so manifesting generators they're here to initiate and then inform they're mm. like a, a combo of the generator and the manifester so it's about um and, and they a lot of them are, are here to to do respond as well um so yeah initiate inform and respond um so it's a real combo of, of all the things. Manifestors are here to like initiate and then inform. Now, manifestors, they're the one, they find informing quite tricky um, or they can do because they've been met with a lot of no's through their, through their life because as a kid, as a manifestor kid, you just want to do what you want to do with sod the consequences. Get, let's go climb up, up that tree and fall out of it. Like who cares? Yeah. Um, but you're met with a lot of no's. So when it comes to business and initiating things and putting stuff out there, you can feel like, oh, I, what's the response going to be? Like, I need to tell people about this thing, but do I want to because it doesn't feel safe? And so for them, it's a real challenge to sort of get rid of any expectation around that informing piece mm. and just putting it out there and letting the responses come in regardless. So so I work a lot with manifestors around that. Um, and then reflectors, reflectors are an interesting one. And I know you've got a story about that. So this might be a nice segue into that, <laughs> that portion. Um, reflectors, it's that um, lunar cycle thing, but obviously who's got the time to wait 28 days for anything to happen? Um, so for them, obviously the longer time you can wait the better because you'll get a sense of what you need to do next from like patterns or nudges sometimes I like to describe projectors as like life is like an ocean and you've got currents running through the ocean and as a reflector you're in one current and then another current will take you another way and then another and it's sort of like allowing yourself to be carried which again can feel quite passive but it's like the currents are there you will get to where you need to be it's just about trusting the process and trusting those currents um and and seeing what patterns and nudges you're getting along the way um and it's also environment and the, the community they surround themselves with is so important for for reflectors so mm -hmm. so important um mm -hmm. so it's about curating those spaces for themselves um and making sure they're in a real good space around real good people they've got a real tight-knit circle of people they trust who they can voice things out to that kind of thing mm -hmm. Yes, I, my so my client is a reflector um, and she'll listen to this. She'll love the fact that we're telling this story um, and her authority is environmental or mental. I think there's two words for it. 
Um, and she, we didn't, she wanted to know why she didn't get that feeling of a gut instinct. Like, why don't I know what the next step is? Why don't I know what I'm supposed to be doing? And we were looking at her business model. We wanted to rejig it because of her dream and her business model wasn't aligning with where she wanted to end up. So we had to like tweak it a bit, but she just still was think I'm in an R in. And I said, let's just look at your human design. She knew she was a reflector, but then learning about her authority, we realized that she, it's about, and again, you, I am not an expert at all, but it was basically where she had to take in all of this information to then make a decision. So before I was questioning her to get that instinctual response. Mm-hmm. And then what I, when I learned that actually it wasn't going to work like that, I literally now repeat back to her a lot of the stuff that she's saying. And then she gets so, though I do that with other some of my other clients, mm-hmm. it's much more intentional when I do it now. So I repeat back certain things and, but ten, and also um, create metaphors from what she's saying. Mm-hmm. So she can, it helps her to sort of like, like, okay, I understand that, I understand this and put it in different ways. And then she comes up with her decision. And her decision-making process is shortened because of that. But also now as well, we recognizing that for her, she has to do less in order to do more. Yeah. She And there'll be moments where she'll send me a voice note panicking about something. Um, I don't even know, like it ranges. She's like, oh, I need to do this. I need to do this. And I can hear that energy change in her voice. Mm-hmm. This is why voice notes are just so powerful, aren't they? When you're coaching someone. So I can hear the tone and I just say, stop. This is, we need to regulate. Have you have you done your, you know, what in my world, we call it like the warrior energy. Have you done something for your warrior energy today? Have you moved? Have you journaled? Have you did, you know done all that stuff? Um, because remember, we need to create space. Remember to, we've got to do more to do, do less to do more. And then I just repeat back to her, whatever she's saying. And then she's literally now walks around like she's some Zen Mother Earth. Like that's amazing. Like it, it's she. It's like she floats. I don't know. Maybe it's just because of my vision visualization. I'm really lucky that I get to meet her in person. She doesn't live too far away from me. But it, she comes in, and there's just this calmness, this calm aura around her, and it's like she really, she bloody knows who she is now. Mm. She knows what she, who she is at the core of, of what she's doing. She has purpose, intention, a plan, a strategy behind all of that. And though she would have got, we would have got there because that's what my programs are all about. But it's like, she goes, this is how I make my decision. Mm. And that's why I feel human design is so powerful yeah. because it shows in a mathematical, well, it looks mathematical way. I suppose it is a little bit mathematical scientific way that you are completely different in, mm-hmm. in and it's visual and it can be explained and for people that know they feel different but not mm-hmm. sure how or not sure who they really are is such a great place to start to really navigate exploring and creating like attaching that anchor to who you are because when you know who you are who you are you know who you're here to be what you're here to do and then using elements of human design to amplify those best bits, life just feels so much easier, doesn't it? Hundred percent, hundred percent, and business as well. Oh god, yeah. And I'm so pleased that you have been that support for her in that way, like to be able to tap into that and recognize, oh, actually, if we shift things in this way and responding to her in a different way to how you would like a generator mm. or a manifester, um, because like when I coach people like the words I use will depend on on what their energy type is and what their authority is because you'll get a different response and when you are talking to that piece of them that's so true to who they are you get different um different compasses is then put in place like which direction are we going to go in that's a different version to if you were talking to them in a different way that wasn't aligned Absolutely, so then you yeah. get the right actions coming out so then they're actually taking things that do move doing things that do move the needle in a way that aligns with them um and and when you apply it to things like your business strategy your offer structures all that sort of stuff because all the energy types have a different kind of 
battery, if you like, yeah. as well. So like I'm a generator, so I'm kind of like a Duracell bunny. Like we just yeah. can just go and go and go when we're in the zone. Bad for burnout, but we can just keep going and going and going. As a projector, you'll need that. You'll have real ebbs and flows and you'll yeah. need to create space in your business structure and create like offers that work for you where you're not on all the time mm. um, because you just can't sustain it. You'll It's just not possible. Um, so when you know stuff like that, it gives you a real guide to how to structure your business how to structure your day what kind of offers feel good obviously there's loads of other stuff we can get into in, in the chart but it's really knowing the basics but then using the intricacies of the chart to like tweak things mm. around strategy and structure and all that good mm. stuff yeah and I think going back to that, that five one part of my profile I knew and this you know I love I freaking love coaching I love I love working with people I just it's the best thing ever but I knew there was something it felt like I didn't have the right key to the right door for her mm. and it was winding me up and I needed to find out what what was it that I was missing mm -hmm. because it I just my level of service to people I like they come and work with me she's on my highest program so that is a big amount of money. It's a big transformation she wants and she deserves. She's worthy mm -hmm. of that big transformation. It's my job to help her get there. And she's one of the, she's a dream client. She does what she like, you, you know, you yeah. suggest something, she does the work. Yeah, yeah. You know, we've all been there with, and this is what's so brilliant when you charge ex, this extra money because you get clients to do the work. It's just wonderful. Um, So she's, she's investing herself. She's doing the work. She's putting the time in and something wasn't clicking. Mm -hmm. And it was the fact that I'm like, I'm getting to the bottom of this. And yeah. I never want anybody to feel inadequate because something that's not working, you know, there are, I know there are some coaches in the world and I'm not saying, I don't actually know any coaches like this who will be like, oh, you don't fit my, you haven't, like, that's the formula that you should yeah, do. That's a you problem. <laughs> that's a you problem because yeah. it's a, you know, this has worked for me and it's worked for other people. So therefore it must have, it has mm. to work for you. And I just, it's all individualized. That support yeah. that I, I'm totally. so, I'm so grateful for human design for me to go, right. Okay. And it's like having multiple key or keys to multiple doors mm -hmm. and it's listening at the door of like, which one's be best for them or and getting them to then learn how, what door is best for them. Mm -hmm. They open it up, bish, bash, bosh. But I just, yeah. Oh, I love it. I'm so proud. I keep talking about this client today because she's done something so brave and I just, I'm just so friggin' proud of her. Like, oh, that's so good. Oh, I love that feeling. You know, when the oh, when you can see somebody doing the strategy stuff and they're doing it, and yeah, yeah, it's so good. So, what I would love to explore for for ser if this is all right with for service based business owners, I know we do have a lot, and even product based business owners as well. We have people that are and business to business, whatever, any business owner. What kind of product services? Are ideally suited to those kinds of strategies if that's even possible for you to explain is that too much of a question <laughs> no no that's an interesting question the thing with human design is um it's meant to be an enabler not a limiter so I will get people coming to me and going oh I'm a generator so it means I can't do this or I'm an I'm a manifester so it means that I can't do this and I really want to and I would say like the basics are great and they can really, really help you. But don't ever let human design put you in a box. Mm -hmm. Like once it starts limiting you, it's the time to look at look at it and go, hang on a minute. Like there will be certain certain things that work better for different energy types. Mm -hmm. But if there's there's other intricacies in your chart that will override certain things. So for example, um, I'm a generator, but I have a huge amount of projector energy as well because I'm mm. a five one because of mm. certain gates and channels that I've got. Like, so I have to take that into account when I'm thinking about how I design things mm. um, and how I do things. So it's not just, oh, if you're a generator, you should be doing this because I'm not here for the shoulds at all. No. Like if you've got something, there's a reason why you want to do the things you want to do. And if we get to the bottom of what that why is, then we can build out around that using your human design as an enabler rather than it being like a prescriptive kind of limiter, 
because it sometimes it, it can be used like that um in in certain in certain areas of the internet and and that's fine crack on but how i use it is to not let it hold you back like if you want to do something or you've got you want to do a product this way or you want to do a service this way or you want to like do an offer suite this way because it feels good let's go let's explore that let's look at why let's look at what your end goals are and then look at how your human design backs that up so you can tap into certain things but be aware of what pitfalls you might come across so you can be prepared as you possibly can I love that at this um I was this whole thing about waiting to be invited for me um I I buck against it sometimes and because my gut instinct will tell me that mm-hmm. I should reach out to somebody. So if I'm doing a launch or something, mm-hmm. um, I always write a wish list because by the time I've got to the, the point where the car opens or the program's mm-hmm. going to go or I've got a space, I already know in my head who I want to work with because mm-hmm. I keep a list of like dream clients that I come across. And it's part of it, I suppose, is visualization, but manifestation, but just going those are the people I'm going to talk to Mm because I think that they are some of the most awesome people in the whole entire world and I want to help them become even better. So if that that comes up, and this happened last year, all three of the people on my Project Worry Boss group program, all three of them I had on my wish list Mm -hmm. and all three of them I invited. But one of them I did a let's – I'm doing some market research. This is not manipulation, by the way. I actually do market research. But before a launch, I do a lot of market Mm -hmm. research, as you're supposed to. And can I speak to you about that? Like, I'd love to ask you some questions. And more often than not, what happens is they talk about their challenges. And I'm like, look, I've got, you know, I've got this group program. You'd be perfect for it. So that was one of them that I'd Mm -hmm. I'd had on my wish list. And another one I did, I wrote all of the copy about her, like I'd written and she had, I did a marketing call with her as well, but I'd literally written like letters to her. She doesn't know if she listens to this, she doesn't know that I did that, but based it all about her. And then something really strange happened when we did, um, and away, we did a, an in-person event and I got everybody to write on a postcard and what they wish they could hear in that moment. Mm -hmm. And then I collected them all up. And then the end, the end of the last day, I gave them all back out at random. And for a lot of people, there was tears. It was really magic. I didn't mm. know if it was going to work. And some of them were like, oh, my God, that is exactly what I needed to hear. Well, this one had hers back. And on it said, you are ready to make an investment to change your life. And mm. then she was like, can I do Project Rory Boss? And I was like, yeah, can you want my wish list? <laughs> Go for it. And then the other one, I sent a voice note to and I was like, I've look, I've got you on my wish list. You can tell me to bugger off if you want, but I think you'd be perfect for this. And mm. it's like I cu- curate these programs to just bring in these yeah. amazing people. And the way they fit, and it might maybe it is my projector thing, I don't know, but the way they fit always just feels perfect, even though perfection yeah. doesn't exist. So though I'm not supposed to like I've got to wait well, to be invited. Let's talk about that <laughs> a little bit. So those people, are they already in your orbit? Yeah, they are. So yeah, so so that so there's already okay. been some kind of invitation, like, and and again, don't like if you are a projector yeah. and you want to initiate something, don't let it hold you back. Going, oh, I'm a projector, I've got to wait to be invited. Do it. It might not feel amazing, no, but it yeah. doesn't mean you can't do it. But if somebody's already in your orbit, in your world, there's already been an an invitation process <laughs> happened somewhere in the distant past or whatever. Mm. So it's kind of like you can do whatever you want because they're in your world. They want to be invited by you. Like that that invitation to you has already been extended. So yeah. you can you can do do whatever you want in terms of that. <laughs> and I, I think that's a great idea. Like like curating, and putting that much thought and intention mm. into the programs that you build is so is so potent, isn't it? Because yeah. you are like cosmically curating the thing and putting that intention out there and I think there's a there's a lot in that definitely yeah I'm I'm working on a new massive thing and I'm designing it around like there's two people that I want to do it but I know it's perfect for them but it's not like when you think about people like that you think oh I'm not gonna um I'm, I'm not just gonna fill it up with them two people it's for more people than that but it makes me feel so happy that I know what will make their life 
I'm not obviously, you know, a genie. I, I feel like a bit of a cock saying that, but <laughs> when they come, when I meet them and I know these people mm. and they're in my world and I can see, I can sense, I'm like, I know, I know what's going to be really amazing for you. And it's just, I just love it. I love doing the wish list. So if anyone ever gets that message, you know, you've been on my, I literally write lists of You're programs. You're on the wish list. <laughs> and I, I've gone like, right, I want that person on that. That's mm-hmm. good for that person. I just love it. This is so good. Um, So messy. Oh my God. I could just, honestly, Emily, I'm loving this conversation so much. <laughs> I just looked at the time. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. No. Oh, I've just seen the time as well. Okay. Love it. Um. <laughs> So I love what I'm really focusing on with this podcast is sharing more of the messy middle stories mm-hmm. because I think we all find ourselves in those moments where we're like, what the frig am we doing? Like, what am I here doing? The doubt is loud. I'm fearful. I mean, I feel like an imposter. I don't know whether this is actually the right thing for me to do. Potentially it's a bit of a dip in sales, etc. And what I really want to show ca- showcase is people that mm-hmm. have felt messy and hung on, held their nerve, mm. trusted the process, got to the other side, and then found the magic, that mm-hmm. magic that they they hoped would be there. Have you got any? I know you've got something to share. Thank God. I just say, like, thank God I put these on the questions on the <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, messy middle. It's all a messy middle, isn't it? Um, I think my inner critic is loud, and it, it has been very loud, and I've had to do a lot of mindset work, a huge amount of mindset work around all sorts around like fear of failure of being visible of being acceptable of being like money stories that I'd got um so yeah a lot of mindset work has had to has had to happen and I think over the course of trying all these side hustles and doing all these things like I did social media marketing on the side and I've I've done all sorts of different things like that as well as then like coaching on the side and I started off as like a general life coach um which kind of worked for a bit and then didn't. And then I flipped to money coaching because I'd done so much work myself on on my money story. So I was like, oh, I can, you know, I've come through a lot of that. I can definitely help people. But it was, there was a lot of imposter syndrome there and and stuff. And it, it wasn't until finding human design and finding the support that I needed, like the right support and getting through a certain amount of this inner critic crap um that things really started to come through and I think it's having the persistence and having the sort of self-belief that even if you're feeling shaky and wobbly you can you you're not at the pinnacle of where you can be like you've not really shown yourself what you can do and so therefore the evidence you've got that your inner critic is feeding back to you isn't all it will be does that make sense Absolutely. so for, for me like trying to deal with that inner critic was doing having the support I needed to do the stretchy stuff I needed to do to get new evidence mm. so I could shut it up yeah. <laughs> by going well you're not right because of this and like that inner critic combined with the you know your, your spleen and however your splenic stuff is showing up it's there to keep us safe like that's our brain seeks safety right it seeks the easiest route and it seeks safety so it's kind of knowing that you've got dreams and visions that are bigger than that need for safety and going for them like mm. it's not always easy but it is totally worth it because if you want to craft a life that you want and build a business in a way that you want you have to get through the crap and like knowing that everybody's going through that and has gone through that and will go through iterations of that because new level new devil right like it mm-hmm. kind of what what's worrying you at, at one point is that gets easier but then new things come in the mix and you're like oh my god new stuff <laughs> um but knowing that we all struggle with this especially as women like especially if you've been conditioned as a, a female from birth like the amount of stories and conditioning and narratives from family from society from who you should be how you should show up what's acceptable what's judged is so big and so strong and a lot of the work i do is is helping the women that i i work with unpick that um and unpick that conditioning and unpick the stories that they have which have turned into beliefs because they're just they're so strong and they're so repeated 
Yeah. Oh, very true. All of that. Mm. You know, I love, um, well, that's, it's my thing, self-belief and imposter syndrome and the critic and all of that jazz. Um, have you got, have you got a name for your inner critic? No, <laughs> no, I, I can't name my inner critic. I like, I know the voice is very reminiscent of my mom's voice. Um, but I don't, I don't name it. I'm just like, I know that's the inner critic showing up and I know when it does that, but I've not named it. Oh, that's what I teach everyone to do because then when you've got that, if you've got the name for it, you can say shut up. And <laughs> also, usually they just need a cuddle. Mm. They, they just need to know that you're safe and like you're safe exactly. to go big because they can get really loud and obstructive. I've actually, I mine was named Clara and I've changed the name of mine to Rose because, um, or yeah, Rose, because it, it, my, I've changed so much with mm. how I'm working with my doubt that that version of my doubt is so much calmer and oh, like now I'm it doesn't get in my way mm -hmm. she's just there she's just she's, a part of you and she's just great. there and then I have my future self who's mm -hmm. my best mate and it sounds for people who are not self-employed they're just like what you are literally a split personality <laughs> no of course not it is just a way to focus on if, if I'm focusing on who I'm supposed to be that I'm not supposed to be coming, who I know I'm going to become. Mm -hmm. If I focus on that, decisions are so much easier to make. I'm not yeah. in the present. Um, but also, if I disassociate from Rose when she's saying to me, "Well, she doesn't. Think this is it." Like I, I feel I've really turned a corner with my doubt, mm. and my positive. And I'm like it doesn't. It's not loud anymore. It used to be so loud. It used to be crippling. And now I'm just like, "Yeah, you're there. What have you got to say?" And I. I sometimes yeah. miss the loudness because it used to inform my next steps in a positive way. Mm. So if she was saying to me, oh, you're not good at that. I'd be like, okay, what am I not good at? Why am I not good at that? What do I need to do? Can I, you know, do something to heighten that up? Like if, is there, is, I did it with my membership. I was just looking at it thinking, I don't think this membership is good enough, even mm -hmm. though it's amazing, but what is not good enough about it? And there were certain things. I was like, okay, let's put a plan into motion. Thank you very much for your input, Clara. Like you, you wanker. You made me feel shit. Um, <laughs> but now I'm going to put into motion what you've informed me. And now it got it got even better. So there's all these like I use the doubts like a to level level up, like like a catalyst to do yeah. the stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I like that. I love it. I'll have to think of a name for mine. <laughs> Yeah, lots of people in the um in the in the business club, the loads of them call them uh, Doris. Like oh, loads really? of members have Doris. It's so weird. They just all wow. say to me like they don't actually. They normally tell me, and they're like, mm. "Yeah, it's Doris." I'm like, "How many Doris? Another one? Have we got? <laughs> Another one? It's brilliant." Um, but yeah, they find it really um empowering because they know it's not them. Mm, they yeah, know it's yeah, yeah. so it's separate to you. It's amazing. Emily, this has been lush, and I know you. I've thoroughly leave, enjoyed it. You're not. Leaving we could my go life. on for so yeah, long. <laughs> we could. Um, I just think it's gonna. It's such a powerful episode, and I think that it's. If you want to learn more, obviously go to Emily. Where can people find you, Emily? Oh yeah, so I hang out on Instagram mainly, um, and I am at Emily Armitage underscore, um, and. Yeah, just that's the main place that I that I hang out. I've obviously got a website, which is emilyarmitage.co.uk. Um, and I've got um a fab freebie if you're interested in more, um, which is your ultimate business freedom formula. And it's how to apply your human design to get more time, um, finance and headspace freedom. Oh, that sounds so good. So people can download that. And you get I think one thing that people struggle with is they find out the human design and then they're like, I've forgotten it. <laughs> like, how do I, how do I remember this stuff? So I've created a template that you can put, you can, you can fill it in with your information based on what's in the, in the freebie. And then you can put that wherever you see most. So whether that's your laptop, your desktop, um, your phone, and it's just there for you. So it's, it's a useful thing as well. It's not just a freebie that you're going to forget about. <laughs> Brilliant. And how can people give you money? What do you offer? For oh, money? I uh, work with people one-to-one. -one. Um, I've got a four month program, uh, design your success. And we, um, it's bespoke. So we go into your human design specifically, and then look at 
the whole of your business, really. Um, strategy, structure, your money, um, money mindset stuff, visibility, CEO shit, like all the juggling that we have to do, um, all that kind of stuff. And I've got um some standalone offers as well. So if you just wanted to focus on strategy or structure, um, there's a, a three hour one to one for that. Um, and if you're just interested in knowing more about your human design, I've got a, and, and applying it to like a current business challenge, I've got a session for that too. Um, oh. so it's, it's not like total long term stuff. And um, there's some short term stuff there as well. Cool. I'm encouraging all the guests to come on and actually properly sell what they've got on offer. You yeah, yeah. To, I'm encouraging people to because people will be listening to this. And they'll think that you are amazing and want to give you their money. So yes. how do they do that? Love that. Um, and the last question, Emily, is mm-hmm. what do you know now that you wish you'd known 10 years ago? Oh my God. There's so, I, I know you prepped me for this question, but like <laughs> there is so much stuff. Um, and I think I would say, you know more than you think you do. Mm. And that what you know can help other people. Like allow yourself to be the expert in what you know and you're only one decision away from changing your life like that thought has given me so much comfort in a lot of tricky times like you're one decision away from your life being a completely different direction like how freeing is that go go do it so freeing so freeing thank you so much emily oh how juicy with this i love it i love it so good it's been my pleasure it's i've thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed myself you're very welcome. I've loved it. Okay, right. Fake goodbye now. And then <laughs> thank you, Emily. See you later. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.